guys, you're Brian Cabrillo's, and welcome to the Prime Review. What a weekend it has been! Jose Mourinho went crazy. He, we lost two Premier League managers, and Manchester City got back on track. So, let's start at the Ayad, shall we? Yes, like I said, Manchester City. He, 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 he went up to Newcastle. Said, "Sorry, mates, but uh, we we were on the back of uh, two uh, really disappointing and really embarrassing defeats in the Premiership, so we have to give you quite a, a ass hand beating." And uh, yeah, it's exactly what they did in a with a six-one win. So yeah. Sergio Aguero doing his best Robert Lewandowski impression with five goals. Yeah, you know, anyone who scores five goals now is just going to be compared to Lewandowski, let's be honest. And they were actually really close together. The goals was was very Lewandowski-like as well. Oh, Aguero, are you secretly he Polish by chance? <laughs> and that... Uh, the strange thing for Newcastle is that they were actually leading in this match. So, yeah. There's that. So, yeah. Newcastle got a bit of uh, an ass-kicking from uh, from Manchester City. And, uh... Oh, no. Bad day at the office for Steve McLaren. Hmm. Was kind of worried he would be another Premier League manager or casualty. There was a casualty from that part of England, but it wasn't the Newcastle manager. We'll get to that in a minute. But let's move on to the next match between Crystal Palace and West Bromwich Albion. West Bromwich Albion had the best season, let's say that. Although they look like freaking. Mm, they look like the best team in the world if you compare them to someone like Newcastle or, or Sunland. Not taking any shots at Newcastle or Sunland. It's just you've both had really bad starts. Like, really bad starts. Like, you make Chelsea and Liverpool starts look good. And, uh, they haven't been. Again, I'll get to those matches in a bit. Yeah, you can see why I'm smiling. You already know why I'm smiling. But we'll get to that in a minute. So yeah, Crystal Palace 2-0 win over West Brom. Pretty standard, really. Crystal Palace are uh, keeping up their good form. Won't last all season, let's be honest. But Crystal Palace fans enjoy it while it does last. I mean, you know, I mean, it's not like you're going to lose every other game, but you're going to pick up wins here and there, you know. You're going to put in great performances, you always do. Ooh, but eventually, you will fall. Oh, well, I mean, same with, uh, same with Leicester and same with West Ham. You're just not going to stay up near the top of the table. It's just not going to happen. West Ham... Might finish in a Europa League spot, depending on how they perform and how the team plays. Because they have the players, they definitely have the players. But I'll get I get to that in a minute. Let's go on to the next game between Aston Villa, who are another team who are playing really, really badly, and they were a home to Stoke. There was only one game, uh, one game, one goal in this match. And uh, it was for Stoke. Stoke picking up the the one nothing win. And uh, yeah, not much can be said about this. Uh, it's a uh, it's a it's a win for Stoke. It's three points for Stoke. It's a it's a signed, sealed, and delivered deal. <laughs> uh, not sure why I'm holding a pen. Yeah, next is our. Uh, Bournemouth and uh, Watford. This was a huge game. If you're uh, one of those teams, if you support one of those teams, or if you have made 
any bets on who might go down this season. Although, if you're Bournemouth and Watford, looking at how so Sunderland and Newcastle have started the season, you feel a lot better of your chances of staying in the Premier League. Again, not really taking any shots. I'm just pointing out the facts. The table does not lie. You're not playing well. Your bottom and second bottom. Again, I'll get to Sunderland in a minute. It, t, t, grand, they didn't have a great weekend, but again, I'll get to them in a minute. But yeah, Bournemouth and Watford one all draw. You know. Um, yeah, probably the best result. Uh, both teams get a point. Near, really. He, um, Bournemouth were obviously the be far better uh, last season, but obviously Watford have improved. I mean, you can't go up to the Premier League not and not improve and expect, oh, we'll stay up, no problem, we don't need to improve. Oof. Improvement is for the suckers. But yeah, actually improving is actually a really important thing. Um... Always have to improve your players, even if it's one or two players. Is just make some improvement, and the and your and me and the team will play better. And it has to actually be an improvement. But yeah, we go from the from two of the three pr promoted teams to the other one, and we come to Norwich were home to Leicester City and uh yeah another loss for Norwich City uh they lost 2-1 to Leicester Leicester have been playing really good this season as well or or we're actually undefeated until they play Arsenal last weekend so maybe they're gonna get back on a good run hmm who knows maybe this is uh what they need to kickstart them. I'm not sure why I made that. Maybe that's the same. And boom, kicking off the uh, back side. Right there. Yeah. <coughs> so yeah, that's the beaten Norwich 2 1 at Carrow. Standard stuff, really. And then we come to Sunderland, who was one of the two Premier League teams that lost their manager this weekend. And the other one I'll get to in a minute. That's why I'm smiling, you already know. But yeah, Sunderland's manager, Dick Avacot, I think I said that right. I hope I said that right. He quit the... Um, I think he quit today, or he quit late last night. I think it was today, actually. I'm not 100% sure. I, I know he quit. I don't know when exactly he quit. But yeah, he quit it, uh, after a two-all draw. I mean, that's a good result when you compare it to what your rivals did. <laughs> and uh, against West Ham, we were playing really good. It, sometimes, maybe confusing I know none of the Premier League teams are really playing good I mean none of them are, are running away with it like you'd expect there's no one standing out anymore I mean it was Man City but now after they've lost two matches they don't look so well, tough anymore yeah they're probably still the favourites to win it but probably closer than it was a few weeks ago <laughs> but yeah West Ham very disappointing I mean Sunland you should have beat them you should be beating them by 4 or 5 goals Oops. Oops. they're near the bottom you're near the top you've beaten Arsenal you beat City you beat Liverpool but you draw with Sunland and it's that inconsistency that makes people think how are West Ham going to get into at least a Europa League spot if they can't even beat Sunderland 
Yes, it's a way, but that's not the point. And then we come to the Stamford Bridge where Mourinho lost his shit. He went bat shit crazy. He pretty much tell and everyone to suck his is you know what at and fuck off off because he pretty much told the board he's not gonna quit, he's not gonna walk away, he's not gonna leave if unless they sack his ass. And he pretty much laid down the motherfucking law. He went batshit. <laughs> oh no I think he's just actually snapped he's like I can't take this motherfucking shit anymore. It was like a it was like something It was like um Samuel L. Jackson crazy bullshit. It's like something Samuel L. Jackson would say in one of his movies. His it was like that snakes in the plane in my life, you know, like the one. I'm sick of these motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane. It was kind of like that, except he didn't curse. But you could kind of tell, like, he wanted to, but he knew it would just get him in more trouble. But I'm actually not sure if he is actually in any trouble. I mean, he's expecting to get in trouble, but. I, I, I'm, I'm, with, I'm on his side. <laughs> hell, fucking hell. Why not them? Let him vent. Let him vent. <laughs> it, it's actually hilarious to watch because, Mourinho, I mean, he's such a great manager, but it's sad to see. It Obviously, something is wrong. I don't know where he's having an argument in behind the scenes with the owner or maybe the, the players have turned on him. Something is going drastically wrong at Chelsea Football Club. And they cannot, for the life of them, and no matter how much money they spend, cannot figure it out. They just can't figure it out. But then they look at, at other teams and they're like, at least we're not the only team playing bad. So, let's go to the Sunday games, shall we? And let's start at the Liberty. Yes, I'm starting at the Liberty. I'll get to the Derby in a minute. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm not going to leave that out. But that is so important, it has to be saved for last. But yeah, Swansea, he will play Hing Spurs. The full-time score was 2-2. Two -two. Swansea took the lead, credit to him, but uh, Spurs ha, um, scored right, right back, and, and, and I was in the um, car with my dad, and he said he hoped Harry Kane would score, and then, wouldn't you know it, that's exactly what happened, unfortunately for Harry Kane, it was in the wrong net, for the wrong team. <laughs> it was an own goal. And it was so hilarious. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know how to explain what happened. But Harry Kane. For future corners defensively. Uh, yeah. Stay, stay upfield. You're a striker. What happens if the team clears the corner and that you're you're up in the box you're supposed to be down there ready for a counter attack you're in the, the her team's own box you're in the wrong position altogether how are you a striker if you don't know a rule that's pretty much rule one of being a striker is to be is during a corner you are not in the box even the tallest strikers are not in the box they are down at the end of the pitch. They are down in the other end of the pitch. Waiting for the ball to come to them. And they unleash the counter attack. That is one of the most. Most. 
That is like the first rule of being a striker. Oh my god. Harry Kane, you kind of deserve that. You kind of deserve that for making that fatal error. If Manchester United were, hadn't already bought Martial and were still interested in you, they would probably just be like, nah, nah, we don't want him. We don't want him. We don't want a striker who doesn't understand what a striker is supposed to do. And I mean... What? Why was he in the box? Why was he in the Spurs box? What did he expect to do? Harry Kane is a very short player as well. Oh, did he expect to beat the Swansea players with a header? It was like, ooh. I don't even think he beat John Joe Shelby, who's one of the shortest players on the Swansea team. He, John Joe Shelby would probably be, he just, boom. Harry Kane would be like, where the fuck did the ball go? Like, Every just like that. Why did he go up for the corner? Uh, fatal error. He deserved that. He really did. Luckily for him, it didn't cost Spurs the three points. They got one back. And speaking of three, that brings us swiftly to the Emirates, where Manchester United it it got the Newcastle treatment. And were battered by a a much better uh, oh, home side. I'm sorry, but Arsenal clearly were better on the day. Otherwise, they would not have won three 0 Yeah, Alexis Sanchez was obviously on fire. I, I I did not see the game. I'm just gonna say this right now. I didn't see. I didn't see any of the games except for one. And it's the one I'm saving for last. Of course, I saw that one. And I'm now glad that I did. But I'll get to that in a second. But yeah, Arsenal's 3-0 win. Pretty standard. That's... Um, make, they're making up for the, the losses in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the Champions League, at least. There is that. And uh, yeah, Trina went over Manchester United. I bet Wenger was smiling like a Cheshire cat. It was a very good day if you are an Arsenal fan. It was also a good day despite our scoreline for Liverpool. And that swiftly brings us to the Merseyside derby. So, scene. We have a corner. The ball comes in. Danny Ings decides, you know what? I think now would be a good time to score a nice he's headed goal. Oh, oh. Everton's defence seemed to fall asleep because none of them decided to do anything. Tim Howard was like, the fuck happened? <laughs> All he could do was just watch it go in. And he's like, Did I have a defence at that point? Where the hell were my defenders? Why didn't they do their job? Tim Howard. His face was priceless. His, he actually looked like he was about to kill somebody. He was... You could tell he was frustrated. It, 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 that, that goal went in. But, unfortunately, Liverpool's defensive errors continued... And Emery Chan, who shouldn't be playing in defence anyway, because he is a midfielder. Huh? Tried to clear the ball. Tried as best as he could. But what does it do? It hits. I think it hits Skirtle. It fell very nicely for Romelu Lukaku. And Minule was pulled at Tim Howard as he stood there and watched the ball go past him. He didn't even make an attempt to save it. At least Tim Howard was would have at least made an attempt. At, was he? I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. But Minule, what? Why are you just standing there? At least dive for the ball. Even if you're not gonna get it, at least dive to try and get it. You are a goalkeeper for fuck's sake, you dumb mother. You know what? 
it's okay because come January he will 100% and now be replaced is why cuz Brendan Rodgers was sacked hallelujah praise Jesus yes yes finally finally it took it, us drawing with everything it took us drawing with Sion it took us being Carlo on motherfucking penalties. It took all that to get Brendan Rodgers finally gone. Our season is in tatters. And finally he is gone. He's finally gone. So, yay! One good thing came out of not winning the derby. Brendan Rodgers is gone. Yes! The best news ever. Don't care what you say. That's the best news I could have gotten today. Best news ever. Unless the new manager is made today. But I don't think he will be. I think it will probably be made during the... the uh, during the... When, during the uh, international break. But yeah... Brendan Rodgers has been sacked. Now, the question is, Ancelotti or Klopp? Come on, let's be honest here. They have My phone is on, so... And they haven't called me, so... Obviously, they're going to go for someone with actual experience and not FIFA experience, unfortunately. I'll have my chance someday, boys. Don't worry about it. But yeah, until then... They're going to rely with Carlo Ancelotti or Jurgen Klopp. And I just have to ask, which is better? Carlo Ancelotti has won the Premier League before with Chelsea. He's won the FA Cup. He's won the Champions League three times. He won three times. He won Real Madrid's elusive El Decima, uh, which they were chasing for about 12 Freaking years before he turned up. Or do we go with Jurgen Klopp, who took a, a shoestring down in the dumps? No team like Borussia Dortmund and turned them into the second best team in Germany. Granted, they were the best for a short time, but then Bayern Munich quite rightly said, Hang on a second, that's our spot, get back. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's true, I'm, I'm sorry. Bayern Munich will always be the best in Germany, he, and will always be one of the best in the world. But Jurgen Klopp, he did a very good job with it dormant. Personally, right now, I think Jurgen Klopp. I think I would pick Jurgen Klopp. But I would not say no to Carlo Ancelotti. Both are very good choices. And to anyone who says, ah, oh, they wouldn't want to sign for Liverpool, they wouldn't want to manage Liverpool, of course they would. Because this game is all about the money, and we can definitely pay whatever the fuck they want. And so sit the fuck down and watch us rise to the top. Because yes, Liverpool season will get back on track with a new manager. Whether it be Klopp, whether it be Ancelotti, Liverpool are back. And the next Premier review will finally have a win. Yes. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Liverpool will be back because Brendan Rodgers is gone.